And welcome to the offseason here with the Cincinnati Reds franchise mode. This is episode number 26 of this franchise series. And the Reds came up just a little bit short in the postseason, losing in game number seven to the Chicago Cubs, who ended up losing in the World Series to the Houston Astros. The Reds only had one player retire. It's Josh Harrison. I love Josh Harrison, but he was in double A, I do believe, this season. Wasn't really making too much of an impact. I don't even think he was on the 40-man roster. So let's Get into the offseason. We're gonna go player by player here. And folks, if you haven't yet, though, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below for some Reds franchise mode every single day. TJ Friedel was great in the leadoff spot. Same with Matt McLean, who was excellent batting second. Jamie Air Candelario really turned it up in the postseason, and we're gonna keep him around for another year. JD Martinez, it was always a one-year rental. He is gonna be on the way out. Ellie De La Cruz, I want to extend for the long term this offseason. We will see. Will Benson was serviceable in his role, only hitting right-handed pitching. No Levy Marte was good in his return from suspension. Spencer Steer really turned it up in the postseason as well, but had a solid regular season. Tyler Stevenson, I don't think we can do any better at catcher. So I think Stevenson is the catcher for the future. Jonathan India, I will be open to moving. We will look at trades with India in the offseason. A little bit of a cap dump and just really, he doesn't have an established role in this team anymore. Um, Riley Adams probably will move, didn't do great at, at the backup catcher role. I skipped Christian and Carnacion Strand. I want the guy to be the starting first baseman next season. It's only right. Stuart Fairchild will likely remain on the bench. To the pitchers, Hunter Green, okay, 4.42 ERA. He's a well-established guy in the rotation. Same with Brandon Williamson. I really don't think we have too many moves to make with this rotation. I think four of the starters are confirmed, Nick Lodolo being the third. I know he was very questionable this year, but we're going to give him a shot in the rotation. Andrew Abbott is going to be in the rotation as well. John Means, I'm probably going to move on from. He's going to expect a big contract in the offseason. I think we can do better looking at other free agent pitchers. To the relievers, Alexis Diaz, got to move the guy. He was horrible in clutch situations this season. TJ Antone probably will keep. Sam Maul probably will keep. Emilio Pagan was good, but the cap situation with the money he's making might move on. Buck Farmer only pitched in the playoffs. Probably will bring him back. We'll see Gregory Soto... I don't know. We'll see. He throws hard and looks good, but we'll see. James Karinczak probably will keep. Nick Martinez, I just don't see a role with him in the starting rotation. We'll probably move on. We've got our number one pick, Martin Valenzuela, over in the minors. Maybe he will see a call. Max Scherzer, he's, I know he pitched a perfect game, but just his age, I can't bring him back. He's only going to be regressing. Rhett Lauder, I want to see up eventually the man out of Wake Forest. Um, I just don't know if next season will be that season. We will keep an eye on Lauder this entire year. And looking at some of our other big prospects, um, you got Xavier Isaac, who we got mid-season. We might see a call for him. Like, is he better than Encarnacion Strand? I don't know. He might be ready. He's a lefty. Keep an eye out on him as we move forward. Um, and then we really don't have too many other big prospects. We got Marshall Smalls. He's 21 years old, but he's 50 overall. Um, and that's kind of it. Like, our farm system isn't the greatest right now, I will be honest. John Means not bringing him back. I look at the contract Buck Farmer wants, and I'm like, eh. He probably don't like he's not going to accept a short-term deal he wants four years i'm not going to give that to him max scherzer not paying him seven million dollars a season i'm just not looking to bring any of those guys back in terms of a manager we're going to get scott Sk scott service um from the seattle mariners it is what it is managers really don't do much in this game all these guys i'm going to give arbitration to obviously it doesn't mean that we're not going to trade any of these guys down the road it's just that we need to give them arbitration so we can trade them down the line now, okay, this is the Ellie De La Cruz situation. I'm never planning on moving away from Ellie De La Cruz, so why not offer him that long-term deal and try to save money for the future, right? Give him 15 years and give him a groundbreaking contract, at least for the Reds. Give him $320 million. We give him 310. We'll see if he takes it over 15 years. If not, we can just renew the contract and it won't be all that expensive. Here's the free agency pool. We're not gonna go out and get Juan Soto, obviously. That doesn't make sense. I am looking to invest in a pitcher though. And now there's Blake Snell, who in game did not get signed in the off season, or I guess throughout the season, because we started this before he signed with the San Francisco Giants. And shout out to the Nationals yesterday in real life, teeing off kind, kind of on Snell, doing well and picking up the win. But anyways, not gonna go out and Blake, get Blake Snell, obviously. It just feels a little bit unrealistic because he is supposed to be on the Giants for the next two seasons in real life. But there are some pitchers who are interesting. 
Corbin Burns is there. You got Max Freed. There are guys that we can go out and get. I did look at the trade market for Nick Lodolo. Nothing I really love, I'll be honest. Like, yeah, would I want to get Josiah Gray and Elijah Green? Maybe, or Robert Hassel III, or even Stone Garrett. Yeah, but I can't go two Nats homer in this, right? Dylan Carlson would be interesting, but I'm not trading within the division. Clayton Kershaw, what are we doing? Jorge Soler, eh. None of those trades really interest me, interest me that much with Lodolo, but this is the move I want to make. Getting rid of Emilio Pagan and Nick Martinez. Just got to dump some salary here, right? There is a team I am somewhat interested in trading both these guys to, and there's players that I think do make sense. We're going to go to the lowly Sacramento Athletics. Mason Miller is an absolute monster. If you watched him pitch against the Boston Red Sox earlier this season, my goodness, the hook that man has on his slider is nasty and he throws very hard. I'm gonna try to get Mason Miller and we're gonna try to get Esther Ruiz as well. Ruiz obviously got sent down in real life during this regular season because the A's basically want to tank. Ruiz brings great speed. He's, I think, a better version of Stuart Fairchild. We can move both Pagan and Martinez and a deep potential closing pitcher for Ruiz and Mason Miller. And by the way, Ruiz can play everywhere on the field and Mason Miller will be a guy who can develop in our bullpen, who can play at the major league level. I love that deal. The A's are not looking to contend. They are fine giving us their prospects for relatively nothing because again, the Sacramento A's, formerly known as the Oakland A's, are always in a rebuild and always in a tank. So they wouldn't mind getting rid of two of their better players for two aging vets. I mean, Pagan's not aging that much, but it just, it feels like an A's move to make, so we're gonna do it, right? Looking back at the trade market here, Jonathan India's up next. I don't wanna pay the four and a half million dollars for a guy who's probably just going to be a platoon guy off the bench. So I think it's, more worthwhile for him if he gets moved and more worthwhile for us as well if we get a prospect in return. And I'm thinking about taking a chance on Kumar Rocker. You know him from Vanderbilt, one of the better college pitchers we've seen in a while, but has dealt with injuries since being drafted to the Rangers. Obviously, he was drafted with the Mets first, went back to school. He's a B potential 70 overall. If he can get things together post-injury, he can be good. And I'm willing to take the risk. When you look back at the starting pitchers in free agency, you got Max Freed, you got Corbin Burns, you got Shane Bieber. I am going to eye in on Freed. It is a market for Freed that isn't all that you know saturated. There's not many teams going after him. I think Max Freed makes sense and he can really be the leader of this starting rotation. So I want Max Freed on a two-year deal that we can get him on those two years and then really reevaluate. And then by the time those two years are over, then maybe Valenzuela and Rhett Lauder are officially key pieces of our rotation. I'm going to get an older Chris Martin. He's been good for the Red Sox the last couple years. Might as well bring him in to the bullpen. And then Riley Adams will no longer be the backup catcher. Luke Malley isn't here either anymore. I think Travis Darno fits the bill pretty well. He's been backing up in, in Atlanta for the last couple years. Um, it makes sense. Take him away from the Braves. I think he can be a solid piece off the bench. Blake Snell signs with the New York Mets. Does not get a big deal at all. So Scott Boris, way to go there. Um, um, Ellie De La Cruz will not accept this long-term $15 million, or sorry, 15-year, $310 million contract. It's fine. We'll renew him for another season, and maybe in the regular season, we can look to really work on a long-term deal with Ellie De La Cruz. One more time looking at free agency, I'm going to try to bring in Jock Peterson. He was an all-star this season for the Arizona Diamondbacks, and he can be a platoon guy for us. He can only hit right-handed pitching, a guy who brings great power to our team. I've, I know I've gotten Jock before in one of these franchises, but I think it makes sense. I think it does. He can split time DHing with Christian Encarnacion Strand, because in this game, CES doesn't really develop all that well. And it's not a hit on him as a player in real life. It's just in the game, he doesn't develop well. And you kind of need to platoon him here. Corbin Burns signs with the Royals. We're not really too worried about that. But that's kind of what I'm looking at here. So against rights, obviously, Jock would hit instead of Encarnacion Strand. And then against lefties, obviously, then Encarnacion would hit. Also, I think we can move Ruiz into hitting against lefties as well. Just because matchup-wise, it makes sense rather than have Will Benson hit. I think we're building a pretty solid team. I think we are. Like, I think this team is way better than last season. I know we're losing J.D. Martinez, but he's getting up there in age. No point in having an older guy there when we can get a youth movement of sorts. 
And I think this lineup looks pretty good. You got Esther Ruiz in the nine spot, a guy who can steal bases, a guy who can get on base. Um, Travis Darnell obviously will fill in as the backup catcher. Riley Adams is going to get traded eventually, you will see. I think the lineup's good. And I think, again, if we need to readjust mid-season, we can. We can make some moves. But I like this lineup a lot. Spencer Steer kills left-handed pitching. Ellie De La Cruz, obviously, in the lineup every day. Same with Nolevi Marte. Juan Soto gets a somewhat big deal from the Diamondbacks. Really doesn't get paid. I guess the market for him wasn't huge for some reason. And Nico Honer gets moved to the New York Mets. We don't have to see him anymore. And Jeff McNeil, the crier, will end up in this rivalry between the Cubs and the Reds. Andres Munoz gets moved moved to the Diamondbacks. So I guess Arizona making a lot of big moves. They got Juan Soto. They get Andres Munoz. Ozzy Albies gets moved for Grayson Rodriguez. Albies now heading on over to the Baltimore Orioles. And there is his replacement, I would assume, in Willie Adamez. The Braves go out and sign him. Max Fried, by the way, did sign. So he is now, I guess, our ace. We get him away from Atlanta, get him away from, you know, Spencer Strider and all those guys who would, you know, kind of outshine him at times. And this is now your starting rotation. It goes Freed, Abbott. We're going to have Green, Williamson, and Lidolo. Yeah, it's four lefties, but still, I think it makes sense. Tanner Scott was the big bullpen, or I guess closing, uh, you know, prize in this offseason. He will go to the Texas Rangers. And here is your trade, getting Alexis Diaz out of here. Diaz and Riley Adams to the San Francisco Giants for Camilo Doval. You get a top tier closer in this deal and it just makes sense. We will have to give a little bit more than just Riley Adams and Diaz will give them I don't know, Jose Torres, a second baseman in the organization, to the Giants for Camilo Doval. You got the slider, the cutter, the sinker. It makes sense. I think Doval will be better than Diaz. And now you get a real shutdown guy. And I think our bullpen and our all-around pitching staff looks really good. So this is what we got going in 2025. We are much improved. And I think all around we're a better team. And oh yeah, we'll bring back Joey Votto. He'll probably never say eh, he'll come up in September probably if we need to. I just thought it'd be kind of cool. And Aroldis Chapman, we'll bring him back. He can still throw very hard. Might as well bring him on to the team. So folks, thank y'all for watching episode number 26 of the Cincinnati Reds franchise mode here on LMB The Show 24 with the off season. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below for more. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy the video. We'll be back tomorrow for opening day 2025. Folks, thank y'all for watching. And Mamba, forever.